I just finished uh, Vivian's book. Mm. So good. <laughs> um, okay, so what inspired me to write this? Definitely Joan Crawford. Um, she just fascinates me as a person. She's an old Hollywood actress for anyone who doesn't know. She was big in mostly the 30s and 40s, but she's, her career spanned from the 20s all the way up into the 60s. So looking, like learning about her and her life, I learned some things about her bisexuality. And uh, I was like, there's a fucking story there. So I wrote it. <laughs> That's uh, what inspired me. And there are other inspirations came like, like Jillian, like you said, I didn't set out to say a bunch of things when I wrote it, but I noticed I was. And then, so I kind of like zoned in on some of those. Um, so this scene, okay, this scene, this scene has absolutely no dialogue. There is dialogue in my novel but not in this scene. I did not do that on purpose. I just realized that, but whatever. Um, this is when, so basically uh, Billy and Nadine are two chorus girls and they're working for uh, this guy, JJ Schubert. And they kind of, you know, they get to know each other. There's like an attraction between them. They get to know each other. Um, they open up to each other, which they don't do to other people or with other people. Um, and I guess they fall in love and basically, and this, this is the point where Nadine like realizes that she's in love. Um, So I, I think that's a good prologue for that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say, uh, Nadine lives at the Plaza Hotel and the girls work at a theater called the Winter Garden Theater, but they call it the garden, okay? So it's not actually a garden. All right. Nadine felt different inside. Walking down the plaza steps, out through the city, through the garden, backstage, the turn of joy across her lips. It was as though she owned everything she touched and everything was made for her hands. For her to move, to mold, to take, to feel against her, pounding with her heart. The world became a fire, blood red and white like teeth and she held it up like an offering, watching it eddy and yawn and shake against her skin. She brought the fire into her mouth, down to the innermost of her, where nothing could ever get to it, and she did not get burned. Walking together into the dressing room, Nadine could feel Billy's pulse in her soul, the girl's smile was a buoy, scaling the foam-tipped heights, holding her up toward the sky. Billy was so full of life, it dripped from her, the way she'd take Nadine, hanging on to her, giddy, fingers tight on her skin. It was like she'd felt the fire, too. While the corns got ready for the show, sticking their toes into tiny shorts, passing a flask around, rowdy and rare. Nadine finished early and noticed Billy was gone. She wanted to tell her how much she just loved her face, sneak a kiss in the bathroom or in a closet before their march to the wings. Crashing out into the hall through the crisscrossing people, she saw her lover right away with J.J. Schubert, heading toward his op office in the opposite direction, their backs to her, and her blood shivered. 
how the devil had a grip on what she held so dear. They went inside and Schubert closed the door, his blinds already shut. The fire howled from Nadine's fingers and it was strange how it flooded the hallway, up the walls, curling back in a wave toward her, raining down in spiraling animal madness. It returned to her changed, a thousand tiny needles, eerie and cold, stabbing through the pores of her skin, a winter made by evil, icing out her guts. She flew into the bathroom and told herself to be calm, pacing, the walls spinning, the floor. Schubert was going to touch Billy. No, he was going to make Billy touch him again. Staring as the floor raced beneath her heels, Nadine wondered when it was going to stop already, when he'd move on to the next girl. What chilled her most was none of them ever truly had the choice. Feeling her insides turn to dust, she laughed, loud, and the laughter turned into a growl, piping through her steely, steely throat, not caring who heard her, how badly she wanted to hurt that man, to bring his empire to its knees. Her mind snaked through all the ways she could ruin him, his reputation, his pride. He had so much power though, and not even just in New York. He had theaters all over the nation. And his brother Lee was in Hollywood making million dollar deals that very moment. The Schuberts were also affiliated with Marcus Lowe in various ways and Nadine respected Lowe. He was a decent man. As far as she knew, he didn't force women to please him. He earned it. Of course, Nadine had powerful friends some who wouldn't think twice to toss a little justice if she asked, but it would take an army to flatten the Schuberts. How she wished she was an army. Even knowing the people she did, she still did not have much sway in the world. Sitting on the radiator, trying to contain the cyclone inside of her, she thought to take an extra pill, but she didn't want to. She kept thinking of Billy in there, her beautiful body, her spirit, spilled out for an unworthy human. He was taking her, seeping her out through the cracks in her will. Nadine lit a cigarette, inhaling, exhaling. She frowned. Then, as the smoke laced upward beside her, she had the thought to go knock on Schubert's door. She put her cigarette out. Every scathing word she was going to level him with, grinding toward a wayward and bitter cruelty she didn't think she could control. Like she gave a damn. Okay. Wow. No, this is beautiful. I mean, there it's so vivid. It's like... I, I can feel this. This is insane. <laughs> In a very good way. Don't misunderstand. Oh, I get it. I see your face. <laughs> yeah. No. Thank yeah. you. Wow. Because it is so vivid and so real and so easy to experience. And you just said, I went into the zone. Where do you go when you write stuff like this? Where, what, what's your mind doing? Do you watch movies internally? Do you recall real life experiences? How, how does that work? All right. Honestly, sometimes it feels like, okay, I definitely see it in my head, right? I hear it in my head. Mm -hmm. I cannot finish a scene until I see it and hear it. And it's like real to me in my head. Um, and that's probably where all the descriptions come from and everything, because I'm, I'm putting myself there and I'm, you know, reacting as the character, right? And there's not, there's not a whole lot of personal experience in this. There's some here and there, 
but it's mostly based on my research. Um, and I would put out there that a lot of the things the girls feel I have felt. So I'm basically like putting myself there, thinking of myself at their age, cause they're about 20 years old. And just thinking about what I can pull from me that makes sense for each character. But it might be coming from different situations. You know, I was never a chorus girl, you know, never met Joan Crawford, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, but there is another thing that's, that I kind of just realized, and I remember talking about it once a while ago, um, there is some sort of trance that happens. Like, uh, I don't know if that happens with you guys, but I, if I'm seeing it, I'm there. I feel like I'm living it and I'm writing it. Um, it's like nothing else exists at the moment. So I guess I can only describe that as sort of a trance. Some, something like that. It's nothing mystical or anything. It's just, um, I'm in the zone, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. hyper -focused. I call that, I call that when I'm reading, like I'm writing, but I'm actually reading, you know, like yeah. I'm so in yeah. it, that I'm experiencing it rather than yes. creating. I call yeah, it the, the medium of the story. Like the story tells itself and it needs yeah. you to be written down. So that's all we do. <laughs> it's like, we're just channels, right? Yes. <laughs> so good. I'm glad. Um, You're not the only one. Thank God. <laughs> well, I will say, Vivian, that I, I, I'm glad that you said that you were pulling the feelings from your own experience because I would have been like, how did you write that without having experienced it? Because having been with, um, having had a forbidden lesbian um, love affair in my early 20s uh, because of circumstances that I'm not going to go into. Um, <laughs> Maybe later when we get to know each other. Yeah, the feeling, the feelings were so familiar and so real. Like this, just all of the ways that you describe the way that the body is reacting and what's going on, and like, and it's throughout the whole book. Like it's you're it it you keep it going throughout the whole book, and every time it's different, but it's always real. It's always accurate, and it's just so impressive. So good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, yeah. My questions are pretty much covered in what we've already discussed. So, all right. I don't know about that, but you asked um, what part of the book was invented and what right. mm -hmm. was based off of Joan Crawford's life. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, any situation I put Billy in, mm -hmm. I read somewhere that Joan Crawford either said she had done that or that happened or people close to her had said it happened. And I've read all the biographies of, uh, or autobiographies of people who knew her and were close to her. And there's usually tidbits in their books about her. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I get like a feeling of how she would react but mostly other than like her interacting with Nadine, cause that mm -hmm. never happened. The only thing about that that's real is that it's, well, I think it's well known, but other Joan Crawford fans might not agree. Um, I think it's well known that she's bisexual right. and I've heard from multiple sources that she had slept with at least one chorus girl in New York. Mm -hmm. And that, and I read somewhere else that the chorus girl was a prominent chorus girl. So mm -hmm. she was well known, I guess. So that's her entire relationship comes off of. And then I I just I just imagine like what what are they going to experience with all these men that they have to sexually please in order to keep their jobs how would that get in the way you know like so is the schubert real is he a yeah. real 
all everyone's real except Nadine, Manny, and Cora. Everybody else is real. Well, brings a book to such a different level if you know that you know stuff is real. It's yeah. yeah. When I when I first for the first time read that um, that excerpt, I the one thing that stuck to me was the imagery of how this fire worked with her. Um, Everything else was beautiful, but the fire stuck to me. And that got me thinking, we of course know that fire is used as the element of passion. You know, when we, when we are in love, we feel this fire burning, we become warm and everything is heated up and everything. But I was just thinking like, is this a um, conscious choice? Like, is this exactly the reason why you chose to go with fire? Or, I mean, what would happen if this scene would be grounded into the earth? Like, would that affect the story if you would play with other elements of description for this story? Wow. Um, so, the fire thing, like you said, fire is passion. And passion can come out in different ways. It can come out as love, it can come out as hate, can come out as rage. Um, so when I when I first started with with the bringing in the element of fire, to me that was just oh she's in love. So like everything's like vivid and hot, mm -hmm. you know, dancing and um, and she's like realizing she's in love. So. And if you get, if you know her throughout the rest of the book, she's kind of like not into love. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so this is like a moment for her, right? Yeah. And so I get the, you know, the, the passion going and like she controls it. Like she just feels, you know, like when you're like infatuated with somebody mm -hmm. or an idea and you just feel like it's for you like you own it and like yeah you just have different feelings about it and then because there's a thin line between love and hate I just thought when as soon as she switches to the hatred like when she sees her with Schubert uh the the fire then turns into something that's against her you know, like it's, she loses control of it and then it comes back to her, but it's different. It's not the same. It's cold, mm -hmm. turns her to dust, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, did I answer your question? Yeah. And I, I yes, very much. And, and, and in a way, I think it's also maybe a strange question because I, in my mind, I was reading this scene with all the different elements in there. Like right. I could, I could totally put this for example into the earth where you know she could feel the ground shake beneath her feet yes, um, yes or yes. where she could just feel the earth crumble beneath her and I was just thinking about how would that influence this character because I, I totally understand the fire in her and 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 I love the way the fire is both good and evil like it is it is love but it's also hate um it, and maybe this is just my brain thinking in different ways or I, I was just searching for what would happen to the character or like what would be the essence of this character if you would change that around and it's and I, I realized it's a very little thing because it's only like four or five sentences in this entire um, passage you, you read but it's it was so important to me and it just got me thinking. <laughs> yeah I mean first of all elsewhere in the book I do play with like the ground shaking beneath her mm -hmm. blah 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 that's just i don't know the elements i do astrology as well so mm -hmm. i'm familiar with the elements the symbology of them yeah. so i use that i guess um there's a lot of the moon. characters so much more depth yeah the moon is yeah, in there yeah, a lot. um i looked at the girl i have charts for the girls so i went way into it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's what makes it so real as well I mean because you went the distance on this it, it you can tell that it's real it, it's 
it's not something you sort of improvised you know right no I spent a lot of thought and yeah I really try to get into each character's head mm -hmm. and Joan is not easy she's complicated and she's young at this point so she's not quite you know the Hollywood glamour girl that she becomes mm -hmm. so she's she was difficult um but yeah it is it is interesting to just use elements like that and kind of you know not overdo it but use them as fucking imagery because everybody mm -hmm. kind of knows what water feels like you know mm -hmm. uh, yeah they're, they're they become defining aspects of of a character in a way mm -hmm. yeah which I love. I, I love that when that happens. I wonder, I'm, I can't even remember. That might be the only fire thing I have for her. I'm not sure. But um, the element of blood and teeth, like that's a theme kind of throughout it. Um, and the body, like Julian was saying, um, I'm very, very fascinated by how my body reacts to certain emotions mm -hmm. and so i put that shit in there so it was a good question made me think a little bit <laughs> i've been trying to formulate how i want to ask you a question vivian without um just going off about my own opinions about your book you can do whatever you want <laughs> um so having read the whole thing um it's a lot it felt a lot to me about um, the 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 way that women are fighting for uh, to exist mm -hmm. freely, and while dealing with all of the different traumas that are coming at them. Um, and it's it was interesting to me because Billy, who I love so much, oh, I love that character so much. Um, <laughs> she Me really <laughs> she really brought to life um the different little things that happen when you're living with trauma um the first part that struck me was her her fear that everyone hates her like she doesn't want she doesn't trust that anyone actually wants to be her friend any little thing she says she's like she's completely consumed with regret and like oh nobody you know so that that was a, an amazing start and then just everything that happened to her her sexual trauma that she's confused about was so real um and then but it's very personal and then on the other side you have nadine who she has some trauma like she's witnessed death and all these things but it's it's she feels more like a window mm -hmm. because she knows so many people that you get to see all these other things that are happening in in the era um like um, illegal abortion and um, murder and, and police and prostitution, all these things. And I was just wondering if you intentionally kept Nadine, if you were intentionally using Nadine's status as a window to be able to like, look at all these characters or not. Uh, yeah, but that kind of happened organically, to be honest. Um, I realized, okay, if I was going to be true to Joan Crawford's story, and yet I knew there was this whole other story going on with it, like it wasn't, it's not just about Billy, you know, it's about like their industry, it's about how women were treated. So I had to use Nadine to see other things because unless Joan said it, I'm not going to do it. You know, like unless somebody somewhere said Joan did this, or she said she saw this, or if she says it, I'm not going to go near it really, other than within their relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I use Nadine as a window. Hell yeah. Mm. Um, and she kind of ties like all those the real people in the story, they're actually all kind of connected. Like Broadway was smaller back then and it was um, more of a community. Like people knew each other more than I think 
Well, they probably do now. I have no idea what Broadway is like right now. They probably know each other still. But um, so, and I, what I knew was going on with Joan, like where her, where she was going, like who she had, who she definitely spoke to, when, blah, blah, blah. I would use Nadine to kind of rope Billy into that. So she's kind of like, Nadine is actually like helping Billy along in her, you know, uh, progression toward becoming a star. Neither of them are aware of that, but, um, but I am. And yeah, this is going to continue through, there's so much, I don't want to mention it, but there's so much if you had a window back then, or if you were like a fly on a wall, there's so much, it's crazy. And nobody talked about it at all because you didn't do that in those days. I think that's still pretty much going on. There are still such a big taboo on a lot of things that are happening. Probably. We, we have only scratched the surface of an age where we start talking about this, so it's, yeah. yeah people like make fun of people now like oh what are you triggered you know like yeah. or oh are you gonna cry yeah like yeah asshole am i like i make you uncomfortable i'm gonna do it right in front of you, you know? <laughs> i'm gonna cry even louder because of it right yeah. what a whale <laughs> oh, what geez. a fucking whale <laughs> yeah wow all right any other questions is your book available outside of the u.s yeah, I'm gonna get my hands on that one too. <laughs> I think you can. Wait, awesome. you're in the Netherlands. Yeah. yeah. You know, it I should know. it should go to you because it goes to like the UK, you know, Germany. Spain. All right, if it goes to Germany, it's fine. I can even I, I, that's cool. Just I I've had it a couple of times where people forgot to sort of put it on international availability, and I was trying to order it, and it just wasn't available in my region and I felt like I lived in such a tiny shitty country then but um <laughs> no. No, well. I think yeah. mine is I'll have to check actually sorry I'm, I'm not actually sure if mine is I'll have to look I'll uh, check it out otherwise I'll let you know <laughs> let me know I'm sorry I've checked my notes and I just had one one more question for Vivian uh what sorts of recent uh in terms of writing historical fiction in general in that time period what sorts of resources are available to so that you can get things like speech patterns right mm. all right that's a good question um you have, first of all i learned the slang right mm -hmm. but and they are 20 the girls are 20 years old right. so they would use some of the slang but they're not gonna use all of it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, I also watch a lot of old movies. Mm. Um, so I get their slang, their language. Um, however, the way old movies are, they're not how people actually talked back then, you know? Like people talked like normal people back then. They were grumpy, they sweared. You know, they, I don't know, they were concerned with the same things we're concerned with, you know, mm -hmm. for the most part, like basic things. Mm -hmm. um, so I just mixed it up with mainly what sounded right to me and using a little bit of slang or like, you know, one one of the characters, she's very sophisticated. So she talks, you know, a little haughtily. And then another guy, he's basically from the gutter. So he doesn't really talk formally. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so you just have to be conscious of that because I definitely had to go back and change some things mm -hmm. like i had i had cora and nadine talking about how billy might be her girlfriend mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they didn't talk like that then like they didn't think they didn't even think 
like even women that were together in mm -hmm. the 20s most of them there were obviously some like in the village in greenwich village it was very gay there very queer they might have considered themselves partners or girlfriends mm -hmm. but even girls like sleeping with each other you know and sleeping with other people the term lesbian was not really a thing sure. that they said um thinking of each other as girlfriends like it would i have them i have nadine kind of think about it in kind of a joking way like like shit we were, we were like almost like girlfriends you know um so i had to go back and change that because they just they wouldn't be talking in that that mm -hmm. way so yeah it's kind of a bitch but um I think I did a pretty decent job. Right, Jillian? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I think you used the word sweethearts. We're almost like sweethearts or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which they said. Yeah. They would say that. So, yeah. Actually, I do have, I do have a question of, from our email correspondence, because I, or maybe we were messaging on Twitter, but I, I said, um, you know, I don't read romance novels uh, at all. And I was like, whoa, because it gets a little saucy. <laughs> and I had said, um, I was, I had said that to you and you're like, well, this isn't a romance novel. It's historical fiction. And um, at the time, I didn't even know, I didn't even know until I finished it, that it was based on anyone real. Um, so I was reading it totally thinking it was fiction. And um, well, it is fiction. It is, but you know what I mean? Um, I just wonder why you, are you shying away from it being considered romance or do you want, is it okay to be both for you? Like what's your motivation for? Okay, it's, I'm, I am shying away from it, but it's not because of me. It's because of most readers that read romance novels. I don't think they would like mine. Mm. that's why I'm trying to call it something different because I don't want all these people to think oh my god it's just a love story you know and it there are certain there's a certain formula that some most romances go through there's mm -hmm. uh simpler language or like less flowery language so I just don't think they would appreciate it or I think they would hate it actually. So that's why I'm kind of like steering them away from it. It was a, it, it was a thing like for me, like what is this book? You know, like, cause even historical fiction has some formula about it. So that's why I'm kind of just saying maybe it's a literary romance or literary fiction with a love story because the romance is the main part of it. Yeah, but it is not a romance. There's, there's other things going on yeah. at the same time. So it kind of goes back to marketing and the whole game that we have to play. Like, what is this book? Who is it for? <laughs> right. Yes. We've gone full and circle. It's, wow. I don't have... I don't have a thing against romance novels. Like if you, that's why I like, I gotta be careful. Like it's not a romance novel, you know, I can't like <laughs> act like that, but it, you know, because it's okay if it is a romance novel, but it's just not. So I just would rather, yeah, steer the right reader toward me and steer probably the wrong reader away from me.